participant fell ill after returning from Wuhan, China. Is the transmission from person to person to person, that's called sustained transmission. Nation's unprecedented response to the coronavirus outbreak. All 50 states, there are now more than 6,400 cases in the U.S. The coronavirus widens here in the U.S. That COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. And cases are now rising for the first time in all 50 states. A hospitalizations at an all-time high. Stopping in-person lectures and switching to online instruction. Process of moving their classes online. Temple University is closed for at least two weeks. The University of Alabama now reporting more than a thousand positive cases. Nearly 300 students at Utah State are in quarantine. Baylor is asking its students to shelter in place. From the CDC, which found that college campuses experience a 50 to 60 percent increase in COVID cases when campuses are fully open for in-person So my name is Rosalia Burr. I'm a senior. I'm studying business management, human resources, and business law. And I was interested in this study because I saw it in the Dean's Honors Digest. Plus I had a, uh, experience with the global pandemic and learning remotely. Uh, my name is Rahan Safar. I'm a first year. Um, my major is medical studies. And I was interested in this study because I kind of want to share my own experiences of like learning through COVID and all that. So I kind of just like even to make if something were to happen again and we're back to more online learning just so we can make it a better experience for them later. Uh, my name is Casey. I'm a senior studying clinical exercise science and I was interested in the study to give my perspective on remote learning during COVID. My name is Jace McNabb. I'm a freshman here at ASU. Uh, my major is medical studies, uh, bachelor of science. My name is Jayashree. I am a senior in biomedical engineering at ASU, mainly in the Tempe campus. And I was interested in this study because COVID-19 really affects everyone. And I haven't really heard that many accounts of how it affects college students, at least in video recording, maybe just online. So I just want to participate and make that contribution. Name, Miguel Dietrich. My major is medical studies. Um, I'm a senior. Uh, and I... I was interested in this study because I'm sure I'm not the only one who felt the way I did about last semester, last year with COVID and I just want to, you know, help the study. My name is Aditi Galande. I'm a junior and I'm double majoring in medical microbiology and global health. The reason I was interested in this study was because remote learning is never going to go away, whether it's online classes or just the Zoom ASU sync. Um, collaboration we have going so I think it's really important to have a lot of the students voices heard that are going through this experience whether it's a student or a student leader and just try to make a difference and make remote learning more positive experience. In high school we were online until the last two months of the school year. A lot of my classes were I courses, so they were self-paced and I didn't have to attend like lecture online, but the classes that I did have in person, I did create relationships with my professor and the students. It's really interesting, far different than what we've ever known as like, as students, we've never experienced anything like this. It was more difficult to get involved with a lot of the professors because even for like me specifically, I had two professors that stayed online during my first semester of, that, of last year and it made it difficult to really get to know them or to really experience their, their full teaching capabilities because I'd heard good things about both of them. The biggest thing was it was that situation where they were trying to do in-person slash online and I thought that was great. I was like, okay, let's go, let's do this. For anything that I can, I'm gonna go in person because that's how I learn better, in person right there in front. Tempe is very bustling, but you walk through campus on a Thursday afternoon and there's like no one on campus. And 
a lot of professors wouldn't be on campus, they'd be at their house. And so um, it was just really interesting to see that there really wasn't any social interaction between like your friends, your classmates, and I actually didn't really even know a lot of my classmates that I saw on Zoom is mostly just um, a blank screen with their name on. During the last year, it was all pretty much through a computer screen. I didn't have uh, the greatest relationships with my professors. Yeah, definitely it was very boring. Um, it didn't really feel like school. It kind of felt like watching Khan Academy for a whole year and being very detached from the professor. In terms of like the engagement with the professor, there was barely any. And with students as well, like you wouldn't see your friends as for your, like a year, you wouldn't like interact with your peers. Definitely was a lot less planned whenever I was uh, online. So it was definitely like a lot easier uh, during the online time frame and adjusting to back to in person after that has gotten a lot more difficult. Like I said earlier, like sleeping in, uh, I've missed a couple lectures just from sleeping in. I would say I didn't really change how I studied or was learning during remote learning. Didn't really like meet with people outside of class for study groups. We had to learn, teach ourselves a lot of the material. Again, teachers can't really go through everything to their full capabilities because they're adapting as well. So it was gruesome. It was extra work. It was unnecessary work at times. Going back into school, I kind of was able to go back into my old self. When we were online, I did not spend a lot of time studying and it was a lot more on me that I had to get a textbook and actually read through it and do my homework. But when you're in person, it's a lot more different because you have peers around you and you have more productive environment around you. Hey, even though we don't have this human interaction, there's still a way to complete the remote work. I think that with online learning, I'm not much of a disciplined learner. I think I have to go to class and follow the professor, take notes from what they're saying and kind of comprehend what they're saying in real time. Whereas with online, it just feels like I'm watching a video and I can't really focus on the computer screen for a long amount of time. I had to do a lot of cramming for all my tests. I feel as if I didn't really learn as much as I could have if it was in person. It affected me negatively. I don't feel that I learned as effectively as I did in person and uh, seeing people face to face. I just don't think that type of learning is for me. I would say I was like an okay fan of remote learning. I liked how I could just roll out of bed and attend class and I didn't really have to like mentally prepare myself to like get dressed, eat something and like walk across campus to go to class. I liked everything being on my own time. And I think especially with that lack to face to face connection for me specifically, it was hard because I always like you know, being able to talk with uh, just a couple of my friends. I don't like remote learning. I don't think it's effective. There's a certain anonymity. You can ask a question, either a direct question or just a general question using the chat box. It kind of took the stress away of other students thinking, oh, are they seriously asking that question? I think that the lack of interaction, physical interaction, was extremely difficult on me. I did like that with remote learning, you had easier access to your professors. There were a lot of classes that I wanted to take at other campuses that I could not take in person because they're just too far away. And I think that the accessibility that ASU provided with online learning was super convenient because people can learn anywhere. I would say that people did the best they could. I mean, there wasn't really another option more than just, you know, Zoom and online classes. It's harder to point out things or kind of talk with people and people talk over each other. But I definitely don't think I learned as well as I could have. Just because in engineering, we do a lot of projects. I think remote learning was really beneficial during that time because of everyone's health and safety. But as a business major, it was difficult because not having that face-to-face -face human interaction was difficult because that's how you create relationships, especially with the professors and the teammates that you're working with, and you get to know them a lot better. I was actually really excited for uh, this year and to be back in person. I honestly had no expectations going into this year. I was kind of 
just happy to be back on campus and have that opportunity to attend class in person. Things have honestly been better than I expected. I didn't expect that many students to actually come to class and attend in person. I was excited going into the school year just because I'm a CA and so I was helping a lot of first year students transition into remote learning to an in-person experience and I think that a lot of clubs and a lot of events were held in person and it really motivated people to come on campus. I think I was expecting it to be a little bit better last year just because I know in spring 2020 it was very rushed and all of a sudden and no one had planned but in uh, my junior year, which was the last year of remote learning, it, was, it wasn't much better, I would say. I think just the online classes were a little bit more organized and teachers seemed more prepared. I, I lived somewhere else during the summer and so everybody would ask me what my school was doing and so when ASU said that we plan to go in person, so I had no idea what to expect. I felt, as I, as I said in the beginning, um, it was kind of abrupt to that change of where we were completely operating over Zoom and now it's, oh, we're in person. I definitely go out a lot more. We have like football, basketball. I've gone to a couple games. Downtown we have the gym, basketball courts. So I'll go to that pretty often and just kind of get out of the room, which is nice. I'm definitely going out more and spending more time with friends, which has been great for my like mental health in terms of being surrounded by other people and not just talking about school all the time. I do feel that being there in person has made me more social in terms of like, oh, I get to see the people I've definitely been going out more, find different activities, especially through the business school, have been able to get involved. I was a president of a club last year for an organization. Going into this year, uh, being able to go to the events uh, that the new leadership team has planned uh, is something that I've been wanting to do more and they obviously offer a Zoom option, but I choose to go. Yeah, definitely. I mean, moving out here in general has helped me uh, meet a lot more new people, but just being able to go into my classes and meet people face to face, that's where I met most of my friends, and I don't think I would have met them if I was just in like a Zoom class. I am meeting more people. Last year was my first year in my new major, so actually being able to attend class and meet people has been really nice for me and being able to work together on group projects and study for things with people has been very uplifting for me and I don't feel like I'm alone in this process. Yeah, I feel like with remote learning, it's just oh, log in, log out as soon as the time is up. In terms of being there in person, it's, oh, I get to see other classmates, not just the ones I was with, but new ones. Yeah, I definitely miss meeting new people and making new friends in classrooms. Now that everything is in person, it's a lot easier to just say hi to your group mates and make a group chat and just connect face to face and have that experience. And I think that I'm able to make a lot more lasting friendships than I have been just over Zoom. Yeah, so I think I've been meeting a lot more people this year, uh, especially being on campus. As a business student, uh, there's a place that a lot of business students go to, Dean's Patio. So everybody likes to hang out there, get coffee, chat. Yeah, actually I am. I didn't expect expect to meet this many people because I consider myself introverted, but um, after the pandemic I thought, okay, maybe I should try a little bit more to learn about the people in my major because, you know, they're all going through the same thing at the same time. We're in our senior year together. And so I feel as if there's more of a camaraderie between all of us now. I didn't really come in with super high expectations. I thought that they might be struggling a little bit from coming back from online learning. Um, but it's definitely exceeded my expectations. I've, I've really enjoyed my first semester. It's pretty similar to what I expected. You know, not, we're not fully back to being normal yet, but things are getting closer and closer, and hopefully as things keep going, we'll be back to like fully normal, back to how it was a few years ago. I'm very happy about this year. Definitely have had a great experience. Um, one of my favorite things is definitely ASU football games, so I was glad that those were uh, able to be done this year, and I was able to go to uh, vast majority of those with my roommates and my friends and we got to kind of interact in that environment and cheer on the ASU football teams. I do like it much better. It feels pretty normal again like how it was when uh, it was in person before the pandemic which was my sophomore year. I think it seems better because like when you don't have something for a long time you learn to appreciate it so I definitely appreciate being in class and talking to everyone and working with everyone especially in labs like that's really fun for all my projects. Like I'm doing a senior capstone design project 
we have to design a medical device, and so we have to do that in person. Like I mentioned, whenever I was going through the admissions process, I'd done like a virtual tour. And that was, it was actually, it was pretty cool because I didn't have to leave my house to do it. I'm from New Mexico originally. That definitely was nice to be able to learn about ASU without actually having to come here. Going to like extracurricular events in person has been really cool too. Like for my human event class, we went to a play down in Tempe. I didn't really go to any events last year. Um, a lot of them were like really restricted and they just like weren't the same as what they normally would have been. Uh, I think this year I definitely have gone to a lot more, I think a couple like first Friday events at the Barrett Hall, things like that. Last year I did not attend that many just because it seemed really repetitive. I think I just got fed up and got Zoom fatigue as people say. Um, but now that things are in person, it makes me excited to see my peers. Last year I ran a couple of clubs. Uh, so I ran Biomedical Engineering Society, so I had to organize remote meetings for those, which kind of involved bringing in different medical indus device industry representatives. And then also I ran a music uh, volunteering club on campus, so we basically play music for hospice residents, and so we have to do all of those things online. And this year, I do, I am attending more in-person activities. Definitely, I'm trying to explore more clubs. But yeah, I definitely think it took a hit on my mental health, having to just be inside all the time, not really getting to experience like the things that I used to. I, had, I actually had to start therapy because of it. I'm out now, which is nice. So last year was pretty lonely. I really only had one friend on campus that I would hang out with and spend time with. And I was, like I said, a CA in the dorm. So I was just hanging out with like people on my team. My mental health was pretty, like not very good last year. I spent a lot of time in my room. It was sometimes hard for me to like get out of bed. The fact that restrictions have been lifted and I feel more safe to go outside has been really helpful to my mental health this year. It definitely was hard to get used to that. Like I can't see them anymore. I can't see my friends. A lot of but sometimes with my family too. But I think overall, like now coming back to in person and being able to see them all, I have I have felt a lot better. Things like that, being able to actually meet them uh, it helps I kind of helped my mental state help a, a bit with that it was very difficult because you don't have that face-to-face -face interaction and you kind of miss people and it's very hard to stay focused on things so I'm really grateful that we have in-person things again so definitely felt uh, my mental health take a deep dive during this time I think a lot of people did because we were isolated in our own homes and weren't able to have that interaction with people. So seeing people on social media uh, post about different things, uh, maybe they were still going out or doing different things and so I felt that made, that my social life was a little bit uh, hindered. Uh, I have a history of um, you know depression in my family so I felt it a little bit more as I was going into the different areas and I actually did seek out um, ASU uh, counseling and went to the services and talked to an individual just to kind of talk through what I was going through. I definitely was not doing well mentally during the whole one and a half years of the pandemic and when we were doing remote online learning because I didn't really have that much interaction. Transitioning to in-person classes again, I think I definitely did see like a really big uptake in my mental health. I didn't really reach out to university resources about it because I thought it was just pandemic induced. So I didn't think it was like uh, an important part and it would be remedied by going back to in person. I really liked how a lot of things were self-paced and I could take my time on things and I got to create my own schedule before um, Online learning, I thought that I needed like a very specific schedule to succeed in classes, but I found that being able to create my own schedule and work on things on my own time was actually very beneficial for me in terms of my learning and my performance in school. I think for me the biggest thing, as someone who's a science major, I really like taking classes from different campuses because there are a lot of professors at other campuses that are really good compared to what I have on my campus. So for me it was really difficult and I actually had to drop some classes because I could not go to the campus in time to make it. And so that was really discouraging for me because there were classes I really wanted to take and I had to settle for a professor that did not meet my needs compared to the other one. Again, it gives me a new experiences, new techniques I should use when studying, making it easier for me to really 
teach myself things when I need to. It helps me, I had to like put in more effort in studying to make sure I was, you know, still doing well in my classes. Uh, you know, I had to work hard to stay motivated, things like that. So all those experiences helps me out. I can tell it's gonna help me in future. It's all dependent on the professor themselves, but if they were interactive and engaged the students, I feel like that itself was a bit better in terms of learning. I really like the accessibility that ASU provided, you know, just having it on Zoom, you could do it on your phone. I know when I was traveling, I was still able to attend my classes and learn. And I know that for a lot of my classmates, they could not make it to Arizona just because of financial reasons or th other things. So I think that it allowed a lot more students to take control over their education and be able to um, actually make a difference and learn. So I would say good things that came out of remote learning was we learned to be patient and find different methods of solving problems, especially with interacting with people, doing group projects, everything like that. I think it gave us a great modem, especially to open it up to networking. I think I think the most I think the only positive thing I can think about is that I had more time probably because you if you're at home all the time you don't really have to rush to class. You're just going to be home and working on stuff. Um, so I did have more time to learn the concepts. Did I necessarily use that time appropriately? No. I mean, who did last year? But I think I liked that I had more time and more time to reflect on things. That was nice. Uh, I feel moderately safe. Uh, outside every building, there's like signs that masks are encouraged to wear indoors. I definitely think ASU itself has done a good job of like enforcing it and just like recommending it to people. Uh, they also have like the COVID, the rapid tests available in like almost every building. So I think like requiring masks in classrooms has been very effective. I haven't noticed any of my classmates who refuse to wear masks. I do wish that there would be more like sanitation stations. I know for the staff at ASU, they're requiring vaccines, so it does make me feel a little bit more comfortable. I think so. I definitely do feel comfortable going out now. I think because ASU, like you have to wear masks in every building, you have to have proof of vaccination, you have to, you know, get tested, you get randomly tested. Horrible. <laughs> I, I mean, it was akin to just pulling the virtual rug the, right out from under students, instructors, administrators. It totally shook up everything that semester. Zoom completely changed the, the interaction dynamic, at least for me, that I have with my students in the classroom. But I think the most important point about trying to transition to Zoom was the fact that uh, in spring 2020, when that transition happened so fast, uh, for me, quite frankly, I didn't require my students to quickly transition to Zoom that spring. Uh, I was really, really concerned about students not being able to provide the necessary technology, not having the necessary bandwidth with their internet connections, not having the necessary subscriptions with their mobile uh, uh, policies um, to accommodate the, the heavy, heavily data intensive uh, practice of trying to conduct a Zoom session for learning, and so I didn't require it. I felt it was actually philosophically inappropriate to require it of students that spring to try and finish out the semester because we didn't ask them to provide those kinds of technologies and materials at the start of the semester. I was really, really nervous about equality, uh, all students being able to access educational content equitably. And so instead, I leveraged the technologies and materials that were already in use. And most notably, instead of doing Zoom lectures that semester, to finish out that spring, um, I utilized the chat and discussion board functions on Canvas, a tool that we were already using. And it was excruciating trying to conduct uh, synchronous class meetings through a chat tool um, and arguably uh, as we learned later the following year, yes, yeah, Zoom was vastly better at uh, doing synchronous education than was a chat function through a learning management system. But I, I, I still to this day thought that that was the more equitable solution to finish out that spring semester.
for me and my style of teaching, that's probably the biggest area of concern I've had throughout the entire pandemic is that student-teacher interaction dynamic. The biggest thing that I've come to realize is that there's a lack of immediacy in remote learning, the application of remote learning technologies, uh, and that immediacy in an interpersonal interaction is paramount to motivating students to learn. I started thinking very carefully about how I could leverage technology to achieve immediacy where I didn't have it by being in the same space physically with my students. And so, for example, um, I was utilizing the camera in specific ways. Uh, I found that I, I'm a rather animated teacher, and so I found that uh, I had to be animated up here <laughs> in the frame of the camera because being animated down low with my hands, uh, students weren't able to see that body language, see those uh, expressions. Um, I also uh, tried to utilize uh, aspects of zoom with the camera, and so at, in certain cases, I would show a more relaxed posture and be away from the camera uh, to try and provide a little more inclusiveness when I needed to garner attention. I would very intentionally move forward in the frame of the camera, make myself larger, and attempt to to, to uh, gain student engagement. Right, so uh, <laughs> that's a tough one. Um, it, on the whole, uh, I think ASU has done a phenomenal job uh, compared to colleagues at other universities, especially the community college uh, environment here in uh, the Maricopa area. Uh, uh, it's been inten incredibly challenging for administrators especially, I'm sure, to try and provide enough information, but also give educators like myself the freedom to, to, to exercise their creativity and do what our students need to, to be successful. I learned to breathe. I learned to be patient again. You had to. You just had to. I did my very best to maintain standards while not expecting too much. I leveraged resources that I probably was underutilizing before the pandemic challenged us in these unique ways. Uh, most, most significant example in that regard is um, my exceptional teams of instructional aides. Um, I leveraged their talents in helping to produce support materials, particularly for our lab curricula in our, in our biology programs. Um, they were instrumental in developing student-centered, engaging support documents for our laboratory exercises that included lots of um, uh, uh, media resources and outlets, things like YouTube videos, and uh, we did a really good job not reinventing the wheel. We did not fall victim to the immense numbers of hours it would have taken to build custom video presentations. We did not fall victim to uh, a, a feeling of trying to conduct lab exercises on camera for students to just passively watch in an unengaging way. Instead, we, we created um, small experiments and tasks that they could complete with resources at home uh, and then challenge them to look up existing resources and interact with those existing resources available on the web. Uh, we tried very hard not to ask too much of students in terms of um, uh, subscribing to additional uh, tools, additional resources, additional media. Um, we didn't increase their costs in any way. This, like I'm, I'm literally sitting here in my office in the same physical space with my own students. And that immediacy just, it just makes it so much more rewarding. <laughs>